Snowman Vocals Incorporated is proud to present a dramatized recording of Mickey's Christmas Carol, modified from the Disney read-along children's book with additional dialogue composed by H.P. Cottingham, adapted from the novel A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Join Cornelius Snifer as he reads aloud one of his favorite Christmas stories, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Let your imagination take you back to the snowy days of yesteryear and visit with one man who used to despise Christmas, but then had an encounter that would change his life forever. And now, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Hmm. Good evening, Joel. I was just sitting here enjoying one of my favorite pastimes, smoking a bit of old Toby and reading a classic Christmas tale. Why don't you join me? You and perhaps your little ones. Don't worry, I'll wait for you to get comfortable. My housekeeper, the chipper, Miss Stifo, will be in with a tray of goodies for you all to enjoy shortly. Now that you've gotten all settled in, why don't you just close your eyes and let your imagination turn as you hear the tale of a Christmas carol. One snowy Christmas Eve inside miserly Ebenezer Scrooge's counting house, a cold and weary Bob Cratchit looked up from his leisure. M -m -m Mr. Scrooge, tomorrow is Christmas, and I was wondering if I could have ha half a day off. Well, yeah, I suppose, but that'll talk you half a day's pay for it. Well, thank you, sir. You're so kind. Never mind the mushy stuff. Now I'll get back to work, Cratchit. Returning to his own work, Scrooge leafed through his account books. Yeah, now let me see. Uh, Thirty pounds, five shillings from MacDougall, plus his twenty percent interest, compounded regularly. <coughs> money, money, money. Just then. There was a knock on the door, and in walked Scrooge's nephew, Fred. Merry Christmas, little Scrooge! Christmas? Bah! Humbug! Oh, come on, little Scrooge! I've brought you a wolf, and come to invite you to Christmas dinner! Oh! I suppose you're gonna have ghosts with chestnut dressing? Yep. Plum pudding with lemon sauce? And a big bowl of hot punch, I reckon. Uh huh. Boy, yeah, boy. Will you come? Oh, you daft man. You know that I can't eat that kind of stuff. But, sir, Christmas is a time for such things. And to be with one's family. Christmas, eh? Christmas is a poor excuse to pick a man's pocket every 25th of December. And anyone who goes around with a Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and be buried with a stick of holly through his heart. Oh, but Fred did bring us a wreath. May I at least hang that on our door? You do, and I'll hang it on you, Cratchit. Fred ignored his uncle's remarks and handed him the wreath anyways. Scrooge snatched it and then jammed it over his nephew's head and kicked him out the door, slamming it shut behind him. <laughs> A moment later, Fred reappeared and shouted as he placed the wreath on the inside doorknob. Merry Christmas! And a bar humbug to you! Oh, that Fred, so full of kindness! Aye, he always was a little peculiar. And stubborn! The door opened and two men stepped inside, dusting the snow off their jackets as they removed their hats. Customers! I'll handle this, Cratchit. <clears throat> and uh, what can I do for you two gentlemen on this fine day? Sir, so, we are soliciting funds for the indigent and the destitute. Eh, uh, for the what? We're collecting for the poor. Uh, uh -huh. 
uh, where gentlemen, if you're collecting for the poor, then they wouldn't be poor anymore now, would they? Well, I suppose. And if they're not poor anymore, then you would be out of a job. Oh, please, gentlemen, please don't ask me to put you out of a job. Not on Christmas Eve. Oh, we wouldn't do that, Mr. Scrooge. Well then, you celebrate Christmas the way you want to, and let me celebrate it in my way. Now, both of you! Oh, oh, oh. Scrooge opened the door and hurried the men outside, but before slamming a shut, he threw the wreath at them. <laughs> What's this world coming to, Cratchit? You work all your life to get yourself some money. And then people just want you to give it away. As Big Ben struck the five o'clock hour, Bob Cratchit closed his books and put on his thin coat and hat. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Thank you for the day off. Never mind that. Just be here all the earlier the next day. I will, Mr. Scrooge. So long. And Merry Christmas. A few more hours passed before Scrooge left himself. He took no notice of the crowded streets and the happy people rushing to and fro about him. As he approached his house, the street he lived on was empty. Turning the key in the lock on his door, he suddenly stepped back in horror, for the door knocker took on the appearance of his late partner, Jacob Marley. The face then addressed him mournfully. Jacob Marley? No, 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 that can't be. Get a slip. Scrooge reached up and hocked Marley on the nose. Oh, uh, wow! Scrooge then darted inside, terrified. No, no, that can't be. Door knockers can't speak. It, it must be a figmation of my ambien. I, I mean, a figment of my imagination. Yet the ghost of Jacob Marley passed right through the door, dragging heavy chains. A cold chill ran down Scrooge's spine. His teeth began to chatter. His knees began to knock. He quickly ran for his bedroom and locked the door tight. But the ghost called out to him and passed through that door as well. Scrooge stumbled back dropped his cane, and then ran to his chair and cowered in fear. Marley halted a moment, and then started towards him. However, <coughs> Marley slipped on Scrooge's cane and fell forward with a crash. Oh, Carl, kind of slippery. Scrooge, don't you recognize me? I was your partner, Jacob Marley. Marley, it is you. Ebenezer, remember when I was alive, I robbed the widows and swindled the poor? Aye, and you did it all in the same day. Oh, you had class, Jacob. <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. Uh, no, no! I was wrong! And so was punishment. I'm forced to carry these heavy chains through eternity! Maybe even longer. There's no hope. I'm doomed! Doomed! And the same thing will happen to you, Ebenezer Scrooge. No, it, it can't. It mustn't. Help me, Jacob. Tonight, you will be visited by three spirits. Listen to them. Do what they say. Or your chains will be heavier than mine. Farewell, Ebenezer. Whoop. <laughs> Farewell. Nally, watch out for that first. <laughs> Step. Later that night, Scrooge searched his rooms, then shook off the notion of visiting spirits, blew out the candle, and climbed into bed, and drifted off to sleep. When the hour reached 1am, a small little figure appeared and hopped through the room, 
Hopping up onto the nightstand, he rang the little bell. Scrooge started awake and looked out bleary-eyed through his bed curtains. <laughs> Who's there? Well, it's about time. Huh? <laughs> and who might you be? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Now come on, Scrooge, it's time to go. Go where, spirit? We're going to go visit your past. The ghost opened the window and a blast of cold air filled the room. I can't go out there. I'll fall. Just hold on. Whoop. <laughs> Not too tight now. And with that, the two flew out over the darkened city. When they landed mere moments later, they were outside a building that was very familiar to Scrooge. Spirit, this is old Mr. Fuzzywig's store. Oh, I couldn't have worked for a kinder man. It's the annual Christmas party too, with all of my dearest friends there. And look at that shy lad in the corner. That's me. Yes, that was before you became a miserable miser, consumed by greed. But nobody's perfect. And look, there's lovely Isabel. Oh, I remember how much I was in love with her. Just then, the spirit snapped his fingers, and with a blink of an eye, they had moved to another familiar place, known to Scrooge. Why, it's my curtain house! The two watched as Isabel meekly approached Scrooge, who was busy at his desk, counting a huge stack of coins. Nine thousand nine hundred and seventy-two, and nine thousand... Ebenezer, for years I've had this honeymoon cottage. I've been waiting for you to keep your promise to marry me. Now I must know, have you made your decision? I have. Your last payment on the cottage was an hour late, and for closing the mortgage. Isabel turned away in tears. Scrooge shuddered as he remembered his coldness of heart to the one he had loved most. Please, spirit, don't show me any more. Take me home. Remember, Scrooge, you loved your gold more than that precious creature, and you lost her forever. You found these memories yourself. Scrooge looked up. He was suddenly back in his own room, in his own bed. Covering his eyes, he bemoaned his past. Oh, why was I so foolish? Why? Why? Suddenly, a bright light flooded his room. Timidly, he peeked out through the curtain and stared in amazement at what he saw next. A giant sat there, and as he looked on, the giant spoke. Fee! Fi! Foo! Fum! I smell! I mean, I smell! He then noticed Scrooge peeking out and came in for a closer look. Scrooge closed the curtains in shocked disbelief. When he reopened them a moment later, all he saw was the giant's eyeball. A stingy little Englishman. I think I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, please, let me go. Don't eat me. Why would the ghost of Christmas present, that's me, want to eat a distasteful little miser like you? Uh, especially when there's so many good things to enjoy in life, see? Oh, mince pies, turkeys, suckling pig. Uh, and don't forget the chocolate pot roast with the smash you. Uh, with the smash you. Uh, with with uh, with yogurt. But where did all this come from? From the heart, Scrooge. It's the food of generosity. Something you have long denied your fellow man. Come on now, Scrooge. We must be on our way. The ghost then picked Scrooge up and dropped him into his pocket. Then, lifting up the roof of Scrooge's house, he climbed out and then as quietly as only a ghostly giant could, he walked through the city of London. Moments later, they were in a poorer section of the city. The ghost plopped down and pushed Scrooge up against the window. Spirit, why did you bring me to this old shack? This is the home of your overworked, underpaid employee, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge watched as the Cratchit family gathered around the table. 
Young Tiny Tim looked happily on as his mother brought their feast over to the table. When Scrooge saw how tiny the bird they had was, he asked the spirit, What that chair cook? A canary? What would you expect with the meager wage you bestow on Bob? Two shillings a day. The house was filled with joy as Bob began to serve dinner. Before they ate though, they blessed it, and then Bob said, And let's not forget the man who made this glorious feast possible, Mr. Scrooge. And God blesses everyone. Ebenezer felt something he hadn't felt for a very long, long time. He felt pity and sympathy for the boy. He hadn't felt that since he was a young child himself. He also felt a pang of guilt, for he knew how much his father made, as it was he who paid his father. He looked up and was going to ask the ghost of Christmas present a question, but when he did so, the giant was gone. Scrooge looked around and then noticed a dark, shrouded figure standing near him. Timidly, Scrooge approached. Are you the ghost of Christmas future? The figure nodded. Scrooge gulped. He turned back to the Cratchit cottage, hoping to feel the happiness he had felt watching the family enjoy their meager dinner. But when he did so, the house was dark, and somehow looked sad and dreary. Approaching the window, he peered inside again. He saw the family sitting around the table, but instead of being happy, they were... He saw they were all sad. The chair that Tiny Tim had once occupied was empty. Spirit, what does this mean? The spirit didn't answer. But suddenly they were standing in a graveyard, and Scrooge saw Cratchit tearfully walking away from a small grave on the slope. No, no, I didn't want this to be. I wanted Tiny Tim to get well. That sweet darling boy. Tell me, spirit, these events can yet be changed. Again, the spirit didn't answer, but merely pointed to another part of the cemetery, where two grave diggers were about their ghoulish occupation. Scrooge watched as the diggers tossed in a shovel full of dirt. Well, here we are, does he? You know, I've never seen a funeral like this one. Hey, no mourners. No friends to bid him farewell. Not even the Undertaker shed a tear. Well, let's go have us a nightcap before we finish. There's no rush, after all. He ain't going nowhere. The two diggers walked off laughing. As they departed, Scrooge crept up to the grave and peered down. Then, looking up at the ghost, he asked timidly, Spirit, whose lonely grave is this? The ghost struck a match, and as he lit his unused cigar, his hood came off, and then with the flame, illuminated the name on the headstone. Why, yours, Ebenezer, the richest man in the cemetery! <laughs> As the ghost continued laughing, Scrooge slipped and fell into the grave. Grabbing onto some roots, he exclaimed, No, I don't want my life to end this way. I want another chance. Spirit, I'll change my ways. I'll change. I'll change. Scrooge fell to the floor, wrestling with his bed curtains. Spirit, let me out. Let me out. I'll... Eh? I'm back in my own room. It must be. Yes, it is. It's Christmas morning. Yes, I can be a new man. I will honour Christmas in my heart and keep it all year long. I will. I will. Scrooge hurried to the window and flung it open. Filling his lungs with the cold, crisp air, he yelled for all to hear. Merry Christmas to one and all. <sighs> and what a glorious Christmas morning it is, too. After he dressed, he hurried downstairs and sped out the door. The two men, who had tried collecting alms from him the day before, just happened to be walking past. Ah, uh, good morning to you, gentlemen. Merry Christmas. I have a little something for you. Here you are. Scrooge placed several bags of coins into their hands. One hundred gold pieces, and not a penny more, da-da-da! 
<clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Scrooge, and a Merry Christmas to you! As Scrooge hurried down the street, he bumped into his nephew Fred. Ah, uh, nephew! Uncle Scrooge! I'm looking forward to that wonderful meal of yours! Fred looked dumbfoundedly at his horse. Of course, Sam! You know how much I love candied fruits with spiced sugar cakes. I'll be over promptly at two. I keep it piping hot. <laughs> Scrooge started off and then turned back gleefully and said, Oh, and one other thing, nephew. Merry Christmas to you. I will, Uncle Scrooge. I will. And a Merry Christmas to you. Scrooge hurriedly bought presents and a turkey at stalls, and then sped through the city till he reached the Cratchit house. Knocking on the door, he put back on his gruff exterior and replaced his smile with a scowl. At least he tried. The door opened and Cratchit looked out, stunned to see Mr. Scrooge standing there. M mr Scrooge, what are you doing here? I've come to declare something to you, Cratchit, and it was something that simply could not wait. Well, won't you come in? Scrooge stepped inside and made himself appear larger. Cratchit, like I said, I've made the decision. I've had enough of this half day off nonsense. But Mr. Scrooge, it's Christmas Day. I'm afraid you've left me with no alternative but to give you... Give you... <coughs> You leave me with no alternative, Bob, but to give you a raise, I'll make you my partner, if and you wish. A, a partner? Oh, Mr. Scrooge! Scrooge then opened the large sack he had brought and placed a turkey into Mrs. Cratchit's hands. Then he picked up Tiny Tim and laughed. As the other children started pulling out their toys they had brought in the sack, he laughed even harder. <laughs> hey, and we'll take good care of you, Tiny Tim. <laughs> and, and before long, why, you'll be as fit as a fiddle. <laughs> Bob wiped tears of joy from his eyes. Then, grabbing his own rocking chair, he brought it over to Mr. Scrooge and joined his wife and kids close by. Oh, thank you, Mr. Scrooge, and Merry Christmas. Scrooge looked up, and a happy tear of his own trickled down his old weary face. Merry Christmas, Bob. I've got a fascinating tale to tell you, but it can wait until tomorrow. He then wrapped Tiny Tim in his arms, who then joyfully cried, And God blesses everyone. Now, let it be said thereafter that no one ever kept Christmas as well as Ebenezer Scrooge. Merry Christmas to you and yours. The End